hello there again from my living room so this is a a quick follow-up to the previous video that i made um about asbestos being found in makeup i am so overwhelmed with the response and the support that i've had from everyone i feel so kind of uh, grateful that i can bring some awareness to this i know that my platform i know it's not huge or anything but i feel grateful to be able to kind of to to raise awareness for this because it is such a terrifying subject to discover and look into um so i'm really really pleased that i put the video up yesterday and i know in the video yesterday i said that i was going to do some more thorough research i was going to do a deep dive and i was going to really really find out all of the facts so that i could come back to you with a more thorough video because the purposes of the video yesterday was i just had to let you know as soon as possible about the articles that I'd read because they were so extraordinarily horrifying and I just couldn't bear to think that someone could have that gorgeous me eyeshadow palette and potentially use it one more day. I just, just like, no, I've got to do that video so that we can throw all of those palettes in the bin. Today, I, I just want to make a video just to try and tell you the facts really because I'm still fully intending on doing a deep dive. I am extremely intrigued and I, I just feel so kind of passionate and motivated to try and really investigate this further because this is a problem that I totally was not even aware of. It was not anywhere or in my consciousness to ever question is asbestos in makeup. I know that makeup does contain harsh chemicals i know that there's chemicals that you know a lot of people don't like in makeup so i get that but i never ever expected that asbestos would be in makeup for two reasons one because asbestos is just so supremely dangerous but the second reason was i was just thinking well how could it ever have got in the makeup and again you would think me being someone who um, regularly undertakes refreshers training in asbestos awareness, you would think that I should probably know that, but I, apparently I was definitely not listening as well as I probably should have been in those training sessions. But the purpose of today's video is for me to give, give you some facts because I've been doing some research overnight and I found out some facts that I think are quite interesting and that have increased my knowledge of how makeup could be getting in our makeup so i just wanted to let you know what i found out overnight and i hope that this will bring some light and give some explanation as to why asbestos has been found in makeup so i thought today that's what i really i really feel is important to focus on and then um, i'm going to continue looking into this and i am going to be making i imagine many more videos on this subject because the more i read about it the more i learn about it the the more shocked honestly i'm becoming because i i it seems like the fda they're aware that there's asbestos creeping into cosmetic products but there doesn't seem to be any regulation out there that actually actually says that cosmetic manufacturers have to test and provide some kind of guarantee that they have no asbestos in their products okay so i just want to jump in here because i just just wanted to clarify because i want to make sure that uh, what i'm telling you is correct and i'm definitely kind of learning as i go here but the fda actually banned uh, the use of asbestos um, in any cosmetic products in the 1970s. However, there doesn't seem to be any governance or um, the kind of regulation over um, cosmetic companies having to test and certify that they are asbestos free. So although they've banned the use of asbestos, which yes, great, that's wonderful. I'm surprised it took uh, till the 1970s to ban it. But um, because there's no regulation in place, there's no enforcement 
it seems that, you know, unscrupulous uh, manufacturers out there will just not really test the talc that they're using. And that's how the asbestos is kind of sneaking in, so to speak. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to clarify that point. Also, as well, I am going to be doing another video um, shortly, which is um, kind of answering your questions because there were so many questions that came out of my last video. Um, they were more kind of, I say, personal questions about how has it made me feel about buying makeup from AliExpress? Or, you know, am I going to carry on using the the rest of my beauty glaze eyeshadow palettes? And I suppose uh, on a larger scale, am I gonna be using the rest of the the rest of the eyeshadow eyeshadow palettes that I bought from AliExpress? Because I've said in so many of my videos that I have this suspicion that so many of the makeup brands on AliExpress, I believe that they all come under the same umbrella or maybe a couple of umbrellas. Um, because I, I'm sure you've probably um, noticed this as well if you uh, are an AliExpress addict, but there's been occasions where I've seen like a Beauty Glaze palette, but then it's appeared on like Han Diane's page or it's a Beauty Glaze palette that I know as being a Beauty Glaze palette, but then it's... Hand Diana selling it with their branding on it, with their own like slight shift in aesthetic appearance. Um, but fundamentally, it's the same palette, the same shades, the same size, the, sh the same uh, claims. You know what I mean? So that makes me think that are these all being manufactured in the same place, but they're just sold to different brands for their for them to put their own branding on it. So it's that previous suspicion that is making me question all of the AliExpress makeup brands. But this is a big subject. It's not an easy question to answer. If you've watched my channel for a while now, you'll know that the majority of my content is reviewing AliExpress makeup. So for me to say, or to come to the decision, well, actually, I'm not going to buy any more AliExpress makeup. Am I essentially kind of saying goodbye to my channel? So it's it's a big, big question. And it's one that I take very seriously. And it's one that I will do whatever I feel is the right thing to do. I'll do whatever my the research I do leads me to, whatever my gut instincts lead me to feel. Because ultimately, I'm not the kind of person that could ever feel good about promoting something that I felt could cause harm. You know what I mean? So anyway, guys, um, so I mean, that was a longer... Oh, I've got itchy eye now. Can you believe it? Oh my gosh. Hope it's not as best as. Anyway, that was a much longer intro to this video that, than I was actually intending because that's going to be a whole other video. Anyway, I'm going to just tell you today about some uh, some more info behind why asbestos is finding its way into makeup. And not just makeup, other cosmetics, baby talcum powder, which, I mean, we thought it was bad being in eyeshadow. It's in, it's in talcum powder for babies by Johnson & Johnson. So I have got a few slides that I'm going to just pop up on the screen as I um, kind of, in a way, I'll read them out and they'll be on the screen. Um, I feel like this is like a PowerPoint presentation, like I feel like I'm back at uni again. Um, but I just hope that this will um, make the video kind of digestible. And I just thought that because I'm presenting facts here, I want to make sure I stick to the facts and I'm not just making shit up which you know what i mean i do i don't make shit up but i digress a lot you know me i i'm not very good with keeping a, a line of focus so for something like this i just i'm going to just show, show you the slides so on to the all important question as to how the hell does asbestos end up in our makeup so asbestos is a naturally forming material it forms um naturally very close to where talcum powder, not talcum powder, but talc or mica or silica is another name. So asbestos is a mineral and it naturally forms near where talcum powder is formed. So when someone goes in to extract the talcum powder, um, because the asbestos is so close by, it's quite possible that you're going to end up with some asbestos. And I'm not quite sure in terms of like the visuals, like 
how different do these minerals look in their pure form like, I just don't know but I imagine it'd be extremely easy you know to get a bit of asbestos mixed in and um, particularly if they do look identical then I just have no idea like how you'd ever differentiate other than testing which by the way it doesn't appear like that a lot of people are even asked to do apparently as we have uh, recently found out so as we know talcum powder is added frequently to a makeup and the reason for that is because it creates a soft uh, silky texture and it, it dilutes pigmented products and it also acts as a filler it's a very common ingredient in powder compacts uh, finishing powders eyeshadows blushes foundations and even creams it's known as being the softest material on earth and it's also known for its ability to absorb moisture and also reduces the appearance of oily skin. Now it's definitely not a new um, occurrence that asbestos is you know all of a sudden ending up in talcum powder this seems to just to be it's been around forever for as long as they've been mining for talcum powder they've been unaware but they've also been mining for asbestos so what really shocks me about this whole scenario is that it seems like the FDA and other um, regulatory bodies, it seems like they are actually very, very aware and conscious of the fact that asbestos is frequently um, contaminating uh, makeup products. But as yet, there's no kind of regulations at all as to, um, as to you know, cosmetic companies needing to test their products for asbestos which is just a massive shocker to me say if asbestos were not as dangerous as it were say if it didn't carry such massive um long-term health risks then I, I might think okay well you know fair enough maybe the regulatory body just they've got enough on their plate to deal with but when it's something as serious as asbestos i don't know how they can even like turn a blind eye to it i think this first kind of came to light about or maybe it wasn't but Whenever I've done research, there's a lot of talk about how the FDA tested a number of cosmetic products and they actually found asbestos in uh, some kids' makeup. So, like, uh, you know, like makeup sets that uh, for kids or advertised towards kids, they found as asbestos within those kits, which I mean, it doesn't even bear thinking about. I mean, and even like if you'd said this to me, Four days ago, I would have just been... I would have thought you were lying to me. I would have thought that you'd maybe, like, misread something. Like, because I I would have doubted it. Because I never would, never would have thought it was true. Just with my knowledge of how dangerous asbestos is. So, I just want to show you this next slide. It, it's basically uh, talking about how the US government is not regulating asbestos in talc. The FDA does not regulate cosmetic-grade talc. The Federal Food, Drug and Cosmetic Act of 1938 does not require the FDA to review cosmetic products and their ingredients, with the exception of colour additives. You know, there's a lot of issues in life, or there's a lot of things that you come across where you might think there's not an easy answer. You know, as much as you might be against something, you might not understand something, there might not be an easy answer but i feel like with this particular situation because so many people use cosmetics on a day-to-day -day basis i believe that the answer is actually quite simple and extremely important that it gets actioned and that is that i believe that in the same way that say for example on the back of uh, makeup products you have the cruelty free or the vegan um symbol i think that all manufacturers of cosmetics should have to, by law, check their batches for asbestos. And I think that if they can guarantee that there is no asbestos within their product, they get a stamp on the back of the packaging. I know that that stamp can be doctored. I know that people could fake the stamp. You know, when I look at it that way, it doesn't seem like such an easy, simple solution um but i don't know what else could be done I, I, other than there needs to be some fecking regulation about this someone high up needs to put their foot down and say look 
you can't just be mining talc and then just adding it to your to your makeup you've got to be testing out this shit you've got to be testing it because you could potentially be giving someone a, a lifelong or life shortening chronic illness by and especially when it's in kids makeup you know kids are young they have a long life ahead of them you could be shortening their life by 50 years it's it's beyond me why there is no regulation it's almost as if they just don't give a shit isn't it really they just don't seem to care they don't seem to care about this issue at all and it's just is it's just mind blowing to me that in this day and age, with the technology that we have available to us, as you know, I work for a housing trust. If we get asbestos surveys done on any um, new purchases, if there is asbestos present, we do an annualised review of the asbestos to check that it's, you know, still encapsulated, still safe, you know, safe as it, well, it could be. You know, we just want to make sure that the asbestos isn't at risk of being exposed or um, hasn't been disturbed. So, you know, as a housing trust, we take it so seriously because we have the health and safety of our tenants at the forefront of our mind. You know, we, we want to make sure our tenants are living in properties that are safe to their health. And I think if a housing trust of only 6,000, which I know sounds like a lot, but, you know, in, it's not really. But for us to take it that seriously, that we will, we go above and beyond the regulation that we have to do. We believe on always acting on best practice as opposed to what do the regulations state, which are very different things. I suppose it's not even a personal decision of makeup brands, although it could be. I don't know how much influence makeup brands have over the manufacturing and vice versa. But I believe that it has to start at the top and there has to be a, a law in place that states cosmetic companies have to test for asbestos. And I can't see it being that difficult. When a housing trust, we can go in, well, not us, but our contractors who will go in in hazmat suits if there's any suspicion whatsoever of asbestos they go in fully suited up i've even seen it in the past where we've had to create a tunnel it looks like a scene from fecking et there's a big tunnel and they have the hazmat suits on and they go in and they will um take asbestos away or not even, they don't know it's asbestos, suspected asbestos away, they take it away for sampling. And it's a quick process. We find out the results in less than 24 hours. So it's not difficult. It's not difficult. I know nothing about the, the manufacturing of makeup. I know nothing about it, and I'm not going to pretend I do. But I can't see it being that big of an ask. I can't see it being that expensive to just test your fecking products. I, I wanted to mention this because I've had a, a big, big, big response since I put my video yesterday and also on Instagram, I put a post up there and I actually got a few comments from people saying, and when did you know that that particular Beauty Glaze palette, the gorgeous me fecking, I was gonna swear and insult it with names, but then I realized it's not the palette's fault, it's the the people responsible for creating the palette and putting it out there's fault. But I got a lot of comments from people saying, Amwin, did you know that this palette is still available? It is still available. And then I went over to AliExpress to verify that and it's still there. I, I, it's been tested and I know, well, I hope that this is the case. I, I hope that since one of those palettes got tested and it was found to have asbestos fibres in it. I would only hope that they've completely changed their manufacturers. They are now testing for asbestos and they can put it out there confident that it does not contain asbestos. But do you know what? There's a cynical part of me that does not think that that is the case. It's, it's just not in any way good enough. And for Beauty Glaze to even, I think, have the cheek to put that palette back, back out for sale after it's been tested and it's got asbestos in it, 
I don't know. Do you know what? That says, that says it all, actually. The very fact that Beauty Glades are even putting that palette on sale again, whether it's been tested and they know it doesn't have asbestos in it or not, I just think it's a shit show because that palette now is forever tainted and it should be tainted in their eyes too. Like if it were me and I was the owner of a makeup brand, something was tested and it was a terrible situation. I would never want to be promoting or selling that product again because to me that would represent me at my worst. It would represent my failings. So I would not want to push that. Like I would only ever want to push or promote products that I really felt happy with. So for a brand to be able to just be like, oh, just put it back up for sale again, it tells me a lot about the brand. And that's definitely a brand that I do not want to, I do not want to buy into. One, one of my followers on um, Instagram very kindly sent me a DM and she sent me a screenshot of a, um, of a DM that she sent to Beauty Glazed with inquiring about whether the Gorgeous Me palette had asbestos in it because she had seen it for sale still and she was aware of the study that was done so she very reasonably asked them the question does that palette still have asbestos in it and this was the response we don't know who is deliberately discrediting making such false statements however there is no problem with our product we decided to continue selling if you are not assured you cannot buy it but we will continue to sell so this is like the third reason not to buy from beauty glaze first one they have asbestos in at least one of their products that we know about, whether they've removed it, whether they now test their products, which I don't think they do because they've not put out any statement. If I, again, had my own makeup brand and it was found that there was asbestos in one of my products, I would be making a statement. It would be the first thing I would do to reassure my customers, who are the most important aspect of any business, I would reassure them, I would tell them an action plan of what I was going to do to make sure that this never happened again and I would be apologising profusely. But this response is abysmal, it's offensive. They said, we don't know who is deliberately discrediting making such false statements. How about the FDA? They did testing, they got the facts. They did testing, it's not like someone's just spreading rumours here. It's the f***ing FDA! sake and they say however there is no problem with our product we decided to continue selling which if you read between the lines says to me they're not acknowledging there's any problem there ever has been and they're just selling it as they always have been so therefore there's absolutely no admission from them of having done anything wrong of having been aware that anything's wrong have they even read the final report from the fda do they even know that their palette was tested and asbestos was found in 20% of their eyeshadows? Who knows? But they certainly think that they're Teflon. Nothing sticks to them. They're like, no, I don't know. Oh, and then also the piece de resistance of this response. They said, if you are not assured, you cannot buy it, but we will continue to sell it. So that says to me that they give zero shits about you. They're not asked about you. They just want to make sure that they, they keep getting money from someone. From someone. As long as someone keeps giving them money and buying their sh palettes, they're not bothered about you. They couldn't give a shit. They don't care what you think. Whereas a good business owner cares about each and every person. Anyone who's ever spent a single penny with their brand should care about that person and beauty glazed are done for me they are done for me and if i wasn't thinking that i'm going to try and see if i could get a couple of their palettes sampled i would literally be throwing them all away i probably would have done by now but i'm going to keep hold of them because i really want to see if i could try and get them tested i've also sent a dm to beauty glazed
So, you know what, to answer someone's question, some, so, well, actually quite a few people's questions as to will I be using any more beauty glazed products again, the answer is, is very easy and it's no, I'm not. I feel like my gears are a pumping. Someone switch that switch, I've got the fire in my belly and I feel like I'm ready to go to war with this. I'm ready to come, try and make changes and I don't think I'm going to make any changes. Look at me guys, who is she now? I don't know who she is but if I'm being completely honest with you, which you know I always will be, this has thrown me through a loop. Has my light been flashing like that the whole time? How off-putting that must have been for you guys watching. It's thrown up so many questions for me, which I am going to cover in a separate video just because I know that this video is getting quite long and I want to separate up the videos because I want to try and be focused with what I'm saying. I know in this video, I've been all over the place, but there's so, so much that I feel like I want to say, I need to say, and it's... As I'm sure you can understand if you've watched my channel for a while, it's definitely made me question a lot of things right now. This this could be the end of my channel just because, you know, my channel was so heavily focused on AliExpress makeup and it's that thing that I don't want to tar every single AliExpress makeup brand with the same brush, but at the same time, I'm just trying to be like realistic and honest about the reality of the situation which could potentially be that this could make me lose faith in a lot of other makeup brands let's just put it that way so that's something that I will have to look at and review and this isn't some this isn't a decision that I'll make from you know what do I think what do I think this is going to be led by the research that I will do and from what facts I can find out and ultimately my decision will rest on do I actually feel comfortable A, using makeup on their makeup on myself, B, do I feel comfortable recommending the makeup to others? These are two very, very big questions for me uh, and questions that I take very, very seriously. It's thrown me this, it's thrown me so much and I, but I'm so glad that I know about this and I hope that my video yesterday, I hope it didn't come across as being too like scaremongering or I just hope it wasn't dramatic in any way but I don't know how it can't be dramatic because the situation is dramatic. I just hope I didn't scare anyone and that's that's the reason why I felt so compelled to, to make another a follow-up video today just trying to give you the facts and um, and I suppose you know the kind of long and short of it is is that if you're buying products that contain talc which I would urge you after you finish watching this, this video, go look at the makeup that you have. Just pick up uh, five or six products, look at the ingredients, and I would guarantee that the, probably the majority of those products will contain talc or mica. And uh, this is where the problem lies. Because as we've now discovered, where there's talc, there's also asbestos. Or there could be. Doesn't mean there is. Does, doesn't mean, like, I don't want to freak you out. Doesn't mean if you look at your uh, blush and it's got talc in it, there's asbestos. It doesn't mean that. But it just means that there is a chance. And it's all open. It's all open to interpretation. And it's all, uh, like, an unknown. Because, because makeup cosmetics aren't regulated. Because there's no freaking regulation in place. Because apparently no one seems to think that this is a big deal. There's no um, logo or there's no... Um, sticker or label or guarantee on the on the back of makeup to let us know to give us peace of mind this product has been tested for asbestos and it does not contain any because there is an absence of, of any of, of that we we don't know and so I think the important thing is to make sure that we're well informed about this and then it's just going to, I think it's going to be a dis personal decision in until the FDA or whoever the actual governing body is, until they actually make a make it a law for manufacturers to and makeup brands to have to do that, to have to either test their products and then to have to specify if they are asbestos free, until they do that, it's, it's going to have to be a personal choice. Do you feel safe using this product on your face which potentially could have 
have asbestos in it because the fact of the matter is we don't know unless you buy your makeup from a talc free brand of which there are a few so Eat Cosmetics is one of them um, there are quite a few brands none of them I'm hugely really familiar with apart from Eat Cosmetics um, I think the balm actually uh, let me just tell you who else. Oh, Cover FX, Bare Minerals. Um, there's a number of them, so I would, I would kind of encourage you to go find out which brands are talc free. I suppose that's the only way, other than some kind of certification or um, some kind of, you know, identifying factor being on the actual package. I, there's no other way of knowing. And I'm just shocked that I did not know this before, honestly. Once again, I, I just want to kind of end the video today with letting you know how sorry I am. You know, if you bought any Beauty Glaze products because you watched my video, I know that it's... It, I know that you know that it's not my fault in any way because I did not know. But I still, I cannot help but feel in some way kind of negligent, honestly, because... I believe that, you know, when you are promoting something, well, this is what I now know, I now know. But when you're promoting something, it's really important to do your own research. Um, but the thing is with this situation, I didn't even know it was possible for asbestos to be, even be in makeup. But on a fundamental level, I do think it's important to know what you're promoting. But I never even thought there'd be asbestos in makeup. Like, I honestly it didn't. This whole thing has been earth shatteringly new to me it's opened my eyes up it's made me like when i was putting my makeup on this morning i was like i was kind of like do i want to put my makeup on this morning even and i was looking at my makeup products with hate just hate just thinking what, what, what do you have inside you like who are you really could you kill me like I, i've just i don't know it overnight it appears I seem to have lost a bit of my love for makeup. Okay, so I'm going to leave this video here because I understand it's a lot to take in. I've been jabbering away for so long and I've been jumping about from here to there to everywhere. Um, but my next video is probably going to be, I think, answering some of the questions that have come from the comments of my uh, previous video and also the comment section on Instagram I'm going to just spend some time going through uh, just replying to some of the questions that I've had hopefully by the time that I come to make that video I will have had some more time to really um, think about this a bit more and try and uh, you know most importantly find out a bit more about it so that's going to be like my next video and then we will go from there anyway guys I know it's a lot to take in I could tell by, um, you know, many of the comments yesterday across in Instagram and YouTube, I could tell that, you know, you guys were just as shocked as me. I'm going to go, but thank you so much for watching this video today. Thank you for everyone that has commented, that has uh, shown support, that has sent me some um, useful DMs as well. So thank you so much. And um, yeah, I will see you in the next video, but you take care in the meantime. Bye.